Hey, what's up guys? So a while back I made a video on how stepper motors work and I actually use push buttons to simulate the two H bridges uh, controlling the two coils within a standard bipolar stepper motor. Well, in this video I'm actually going to show you how I typically control stepper motors which is to use a, uh, an integrated stepper motor driver chip. Okay, and then you just talk to this chip using standard uh, digital pins from your microcontroller and you can get that nice clean movement. You can even micro step. So in that video I talked about full step, half step. Well this driver, you can strap it to micro step. So you can do quarter step all the way down and we'll, we'll actually talk about the modes here in a little bit, but you can get that precise movement that might be needed for your project. You know, that's why these motors are typically found in 3d printers cnc machines this one was actually pulled out of an old scanner so um it's the same motor from that video by the way so anyway we'll talk all about what i've got going on here which is super simple and then get into the code a little bit um, which translates those steps into something useful like number of rotations at a certain rpm so let's go ahead and jump in Okay, so I'm just going to give you um, a quick rundown on the hardware. Uh, this board here that's controlling the motor is a board I designed. It's called the Stepper Board. Um, and I actually handed this out to the patrons of this channel. So if you're interested in that, take a look at the description below. Uh, but it's basically just a, a breakout board for the DRV8825 Stepper Motor Driver. And uh, there are, are other boards out there. I'm sure if you throw this part number into eBay or whatever, you'll find a similar kind of board. Uh, or look at, uh, uh, I believe it's called the Easy Driver. Uh, and that's based on an Allegro part. So, and, and they're all the same kind of deal. You basically control the driver uh, with simple digital pins from your microcontroller. So here's the schematic for the board you see here. Uh, the motor hooks up over here. You've got your four wire bipolar stepper motor hooked up over here. A plus A minus B plus B minus. So you've got your A coil and your B coil. Uh, if you don't know which wire is which, you can always ohm it out. You want to see resistance between A plus and A minus and then B plus and B minus. Uh, and don't worry, it doesn't matter if you've got A mixed up with B or the A plus and A minus are mixed up. The worst that could happen uh, is that uh, it just rotates in the wrong direction. So you can easily fix that by swapping A plus and A minus. Uh, you've got your motor voltage that you're going to run the driver at, VM here, and I'm running it at 12 volts. The motor driver current is set with a trim pot, and I've got that right here. And usually the way I do it is start it all the way counterclockwise and then slowly rotate it up while I'm actually running some test code on the motor to see where I'm getting you know good torque out of the motor and then I just stop it there and seal it off so um, so that's that then to actually rotate the motor it's pretty simple you've got a step pin right here and anytime this part sees a rising edge on that pin it will rotate the motor one step and this is a 1.8 degree per step motor uh, this big guy I've got here is also 1.8 degrees per step. Uh, I've seen other ones that are 0.9 or some are 0.45. So that's how it will actually step the motor. And it'll step that in whichever direction is the direction pin here set for. So from your microcontroller, you're also going to want to uh, connect up to this direction pin and that will set the direction of rotation. So pretty simple. And it will step it either a full step or half step or quarter step or whatever based on how you have these mode pins strapped and again we'll talk about that later but if you leave all these pins unconnected you'll be rotating at full step 1.8 degrees for this motor then you also have this active pin that I've broken out and uh, this allows you to completely disable the motor so right now you see the shaft is free spinning easily uh, if you wanted it to actually hold that position with torque, you could keep the motor activated and it'll actually keep the coils energized. Um, so that's another thing. Now I'm running the microcontroller at five volts from the USB. So this actually, this setup I've got here requires two supplies. Um, and that's actually a screw up in this board 
here and you see I've got this do not use the 3.3 volts and that's because there's no way to do anything with this 3.3 volts because I've got the sleep and reset pins both tied together tied to ground so you'll never be able to give this that high signal here you can never pull this high because there will never be a voltage to pull it high to that 3.3 volts will never be there so but anyway so for my setup here we need two supplies so that is the uh, stepper board and then of course I'm using an Arduino programmable uh, little AT Mega 328 breakout board and just for grins I'll show you that as well so there's the full pinout for that board but again we're just using standard digital pins so it really doesn't matter how you hook this thing up nothing special there okay so jumping over to the code you're probably thinking well gee that's pretty easy all I have to do is just give it a simple you know just toggle the digital pin and it'll rotate the motor and that that is true and that that is all you will need um, but if you want to do anything interesting with this motor you're gonna to want to do positioning type stuff like rotate exactly some number of degrees or some rotations at a very specific speed so I've got some test code here with a little function here that you basically do just that you give it a rotation and an RPM and it'll take care of the rest for you so for example here let me just show you real quick what this will do so if we wanted to just rotate this at 100 RPMs like that and we could just do one rotation there's nothing else in this loop so it'll just continuously do that and I'm gonna upload that and there you have it rotation at uh, 100 RPM then you could do other things like uh, let's rotate 100 RPM and then wait a second and then do the same thing but this time in the other direction just a minus one rotation and you'll see what happens and there we go and then back so that's kinda cool and you saw I had the fidget spinner tachometer hooked up over here before I was using that so I could actually measure the RPMs to get uh, a sense of how accurate I was actually able to get this motor to spin so anyway I got that out of the way though so now I'm just gonna briefly go through this code but before I do that let me show you the calculations needed to step this okay so I thought it'd be a little bit easier to do this on paper uh, I also have a full explanation in the code as well but sometimes it's a little bit easier to see and talk about it on paper so basically what we're gonna do here is drive that step pin like this okay on and off we've got this total period it's the frequency we're driving that step pin at to achieve some RPM uh, based on whatever the step angle of the motor is what the step mode is of the driver um, and full number of rotations right so we'll get into all of that but if we look here um, at this so basically we know this is a 1.8 degree motor okay 1.8 degrees per step so how many total steps are in a rotation well we take 360 and we divide that by 1.8 we get 200 steps if the driver is set up to run at half step we are then going to double that that would be 400 so you'll see in the code that I actually have it configurable so you would put 0.5 in for the step mode so we take that value and divide it by the step mode which is 0.5 and that gives us 400 steps so that's just uh, that's just an example here of course it could be quarter step or it could just be one full step then you just put a one in there and it would still be the 200 steps per rotation but what's important to know is the seconds per step because that's what we're actually going to drive this at not seconds but microseconds and that's easy to convert so we need to convert this to the speed we want to run at this 100 rpm how do we convert that to seconds per step so right here we have the rotations per minute so this is this value right here is the rpm right here rotations so you'd put 100 in for that we know that we want we've got 100 rpms rotations per minute then we know 60 seconds is in one minute that cancels out the minute like that so now we've got the seconds then we need to convert rotations to steps so if we had a hundred 
uh, 100 rotations per minute here, we know that one rotation equals this number of steps, total number of steps right there, 400 steps. So the full equation there then to calculate is we take 60 divided by our RPM value divided by the total steps value, which is right here, the 400 steps. So going down into the code here, uh, we'll see right here, uh, this is the function. So it uses the rotation value coming in that could either be positive or negative and based on if it's if it's positive or negative we set that direction pin and if it's negative go ahead and flip it back to positive so right here the first thing we do is calculate the total steps per rotation there's your 360 divided by your motor angle divided by the step size or the step mode for the motor okay then we take that value, oh, and this was something I actually uh, missed t talking, oops, is we take that value, the steps per rotation, and we need to then figure out the total number of steps. So right here we have this for loop going, right? So we're gonna run this for loop at, you know, uh, driving that pin high and low and we calculate the total number of steps, and this is easy because if you're gonna do 100 rotations or whatever, uh, it's simply this value times your total number of steps. So if we know 400 steps is one rotation, we wanna rotate two ro full rotations, two times that 800 total steps. So that would be your 4i equals zero, i is less than 800, and then you get your two rotations. Okay, so total steps, that's what that is right there. And there you have it, your for loop down here, just like we talked about. And this is the big calculation right here. We just walked through, so there it is, 60 seconds. Divided by the RPM, which is also divided by the steps per rotation. And then to convert that to microseconds, we just multiply 1E6. So now we have the seconds in real microseconds, which is what we're gonna use. And we need an on time and an off time. We're gonna do 50% duty cycle. So equal parts on, equal parts off, divide by two. And then we've got this little minus five out there. And that is to basically compensate for the for loop. Okay, cause it's gonna go through this here and this check here to increment I and to check if I is less than total steps, that takes time. So I added in, uh, I should say, I subtracted five out of this uh, step period. And that's something I still need to tweak with a little bit because I was noticing my speed was um, a little, uh, I was, I forget how it was, but, um, or how far, in it, for how far off it was from the commanded speed. So if I asked for 100 RPM, it was off by some some number of RPMs, and I was kind of tweaking with that value there. So anyway, that's uh, something I still need to improve on. Um, and the other thing too here is that I was originally doing digital right too low, digital right too high, you know, things like that. But uh, obviously the direct port manipulation here is much, much faster than using the bloated Arduino library to control digital pins. So that might be something to look into in a, in a future uh, version of this, this code. Uh, so that's why it is fixed right now using only digital pin two. So that's pretty much all there is to the code. I don't really think I need to get into anything else, but um, oh, well, we could talk about step modes a little bit. I don't think I really need to give you a demo of step modes, but I will show you. Okay, and here you have it. So section 8.3.5, you've got your microstepping indexer. So basically this is how you strap the pins. So when they're all floating, they're all pulled low. So you get full step. And then you pull mode zero high, you get half step. Quarter step, eight micro steps. That's one eighth, one sixteenth, and one thirty second there. And, and that's pretty good. So actually, just for the hell of it, let me show you what that looks like. Okay, so I just set the motor up. I pulled uh, mode zero and mode two high. So we're running at one divided by 32 
0.03125 and you can see it's the same code but it's smooth as butter so this is how you get that super accurate type motion out of these stepper motors and you can do that too and we can run them very very slowly like uh, one rpm just to show you what that looks like let's upload that real quick it's going to be pretty slow obviously like a clock but there you go so it's really nice smooth action out of that motor um, and if you don't want to use this code, certainly you can just do real stepping. So if you're not running at rotations per minute or rotations, uh, and you actually know what your step angle is, you divide it by the 32, then you can use that. But anyway, I thought that would be, this code would be helpful to use. Oh, the other thing too, I want to show you real quick. Let me change this. Oh. Okay, so if you need some speed out of these motors, the other thing you're going to need to do is you can't just come out and run these things at 500 RPM right out of the gate. You actually have to ramp them up. So this is a little easy, a simple way to, to accelerate these motors. So here's a for loop right here starting at 200 RPM. Oh, and I actually got a stall there. Probably just need a little bit more current. There we go. Okay, so starting at 200 uh, it will actually ramp up the RPM by 10 RPM every single time and it's only uh, You can see here. It's just every rotation. It's actually increasing that speed by 10 RPM and then rotating 20 turns at 500 RPM and then it ramps back down to 200 and then just does that over and over again So you can get some pretty good speed. I'm stalling this one out. I think I need to drive a little bit harder but uh, <laughs> anyway, oops, there we go. So anyway, just uh, another way to, a uh, little uh, tip there to drive these motors. Uh, and I'll just release this code kind of as is. Oh boy, ripped the wire out of the board and it's dead. So anyway, that's just a quick video there on how to work with these uh, fully integrated stepper motor driver chips. Thanks for watching.